Hi, Detective Dan here. Your mission in this game, should you choose to accept it, is to memorize the pictures we show you. Then, I will take one away. Your job is to tell me which picture is missing. Let's get started. Look at these cabinets with locks. Which door is missing a lock? The green one. Great job! Memorize these animal footprints. Now, which one is missing? That's right! The bird! Great job! Look at the shapes on this wall. Which shape is missing? Yes! It's the heart! You're doing great! Memorize these pictures. Which picture is missing? That's correct! It's the dog! Look at these keys. Which key is missing? The red one. Nice job. Take a look at this. Which item is missing? The hamburger. Great job. You fulfilled your mission.
Joseph was the favorite, and he was an outcast. Joseph was a dreamer, but taken as a prisoner. Joseph was the chosen, and he was alone. Thought he was forgotten, waiting for the time to come. Joseph. This is Sister Satina, and I am so excited to be in front of you once again, delivering the Word of God. So excited that you've decided to join us again. While we might be distant through video, we are one in the Spirit. God is in our midst, and Lord God, we just thank you that we are here together, and we are open to receiving your Word. So today I'm going to jump right into the Word. I want to make sure that there are no hindrances, nothing, nothing else comes between us in terms of the distance, and that we just pull ourselves together in one spirit so that this word can be rooted and grounded in your hearts and my heart, because I learn as I'm teaching, and we can be better for it. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you once again for this awesome opportunity to be in your presence, to be in your will, to be in your word. Lord, we thank you that this word comes forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. Father God, we just thank you that it's rooted and grounded and planted in our hearts in such a way that for the rest of our lives on this earth, it will 
manifest your glory in all we do and say. We thank you, we praise you, we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so like I said, I want to get right into the word today. Uh, this lesson, I'm, ex I'm excited about every lesson. I say that every time, don't I? But I am excited about this lesson because it's one of those things that's always been close to my heart when I talk to people who are young because I feel like oftentimes when you come to church or any ceremony or things that we seem to be doing out of just practice or because of it's what we've always done, oftentimes it loses its power nowadays. And when I get a chance to teach on, I guess symbolism would be the best way to say it or maybe better, the reason we are doing this or the reason God is doing or saying this is because of this. And I like being able to connect things that happen in the Old Testament, which sometimes can seem really like heavy and weighted and old, to, to take that and jump it all the way up to present day so we can apply it to our lives here so it makes sense in what we're doing. That's, that always excites me because to me it's connecting the, all the Old and New Testament, which can, which can seem heavy and old, to our lives today as we live, walk, and breathe in the world that we live in. So, so anyway, I like these kind of messages. I like all kinds of messages. So let's, let's jump right into it. So we are teach, I'm teaching you today, and again, this is based on the fact that we're, I'm at part four of this lesson about the high priest, right? And this is the last section of it, and it's really focused on helping you understand the ceremony that took place in order to make Aaron and his family and his sons the first chosen family or tribe to represent the people of God to God in the sense that they were priests, they were anointed to go into the temple, they were set apart. You've learned words like sanctified, consecrated, um, and that, again, the term set apart, meaning you're special for a purpose. And that's what his family was chose for. And so I could jump right into today and say, you know, we need to do things differently than other people. We're a peculiar people. We're in this world, not of this world. We know we've heard that before. But this lesson is cool because, again, it helps us to kind of connect the dots to see why God did what he did back then. So it can be a, what we call a type and shadow, which you should have heard in a previous lesson, to things to come. So while it happened 2,000 years ago, it was for a purpose so that it would, could teach us and guide us today. It is not old, it is not passed away. It is not, oh, that don't have anything to do with today. It does. God, God did nothing by accident or by chance. It all had a purpose. So again, when Aaron, Aaron's family was chosen and Moses had to you know, do this ceremony uh, it was, everything had a meaning. So, you know, we think about, say for example, graduation. Uh, whether you're graduating from, what, kindergarten to first grade, or to middle school, or to high school, or to college, or whatever graduation, you could be in the military. You may be finishing basic training and moving on to what your assigned role, role is. The ceremony, the graduation ceremony says this. It says, this person has fulfilled all the requirements completed all the tests, passed all the tests, and they are now prepared to move to this next phase. So again, if it's, we're talking about school, I keep it in that, um, then you're graduating to an, maybe another level of education or to a job. Matter of fact, if you're in a job, maybe you, you have to train, get a certificate that says, okay, you're ready to complete this job. And so this ceremony that Aaron, I'm sorry, that Moses had to conduct for Aaron it's the same type of thing. It is saying that Aaron and his family are fully equipped and ready for the task at hand. And we know, again, they were to be the priest in the temple. And so it's interesting that the lesson, I'm sorry, that the ceremony requires a, a, a cleansing and a purging where things had to be removed from them. And what it does, again, that type and shadow, meaning it, it's not just a thing, it means something for us to learn from. It's like the fact that Jesus had to be purified white as snow. Remember, this overall lesson is called, is about the blood of Jesus and the purpose of it and the power in it. And so, again, this is a, a, another situation where all that old stuff had to be removed from them. 
They had to be cleansed and, you know, everything had to be reset for this purpose. And so, so again, let's, so let's, let's talk about the ceremony. Let's talk about what had to be done because everything that had to be done was for a reason and it was for our education. So, so following God's orders, um, Moses had to do specific things. So the first thing he did in order to prepare Aaron and his sons, he took oil. He took oil and that oil represented, what did that oil represent? The Holy Spirit. The oil in this situation, it represents the Holy Spirit and most times it does anyway. But he took oil and the Bible says he poured it, he poured it over, uh, I'll just pick Aaron, but again, his sons were involved too. And it wasn't a, you know, oftentimes you're anointed to have a little bit of oil put on and you, you know, it just goes on your forehead or, you know, it just touched someplace on your body. That's not what happened. He poured oil on him, meaning it went on his hair, his face, it was down his beard, it was all over his whole body. And that was for, for Aaron, for the purpose, but it was also for the people who were watching. It was a symbol to the whole nation of Israel so that they could see that Aaron was being anointed, consecrated, and sanctified for the work in the temple. Okay? So that we're familiar with, the, maybe not the pouring of oil on our, our bodies, but definitely the, the anointing that the oil can place on you, right? But this is what he did that's a little more interesting. So they took the sacrificial blood of an animal, right? And he, this is what Moses did for Aaron. He dipped his finger in the blood and he placed it, no, not on a head, forehead like we know. He put the oil on his ear. He put that sacrificial blood on his ear. Now, again, what I say, God doesn't do anything by mistake. There's nothing in the Bible in there that's just by accident. It means something. So we're talking about the ear. What's the ear for? Why do you think he picked the ear to anoint in this special ceremony where he was setting him apart? Okay. Basically what God was saying, what you listen to, um, the things that you allow to go into your ear gates, you have to keep them in check. Gossip, uh, dirty jokes, bad music, things like that. Having that stuff go into your spirit is not for an anointed or set apart person of God. Because again, it, it violates and it's, it separates you from what God has for you. And so you don't get to do some of those things anymore if you were doing them before. And, you know, your ears are now set apart. God is saying they now belong to me. Okay, so now, like I said, you know, this was an interesting ceremony because everything was done for a reason and to symbolize. So after he anointed his ear, in, on the right side, he anointed Aaron's thumb, his right thumb, okay? So again, let's keep in mind what we're talking about and why we're having this ceremony. Why do you think he anointed his thumb, the thumb on the hand? Now think about what you do with your hand, what the purpose of hand. You, you do things with your hand, right? And so basically God was saying, look, your hands are now set apart and you're made holy and you're fully equipped to do the work. So you have to be careful. You have to think about what you're doing because what you're doing is now represented, representing the most high God. And so Aaron couldn't do certain things maybe that he had done before or his sons. He had to, first of all, be mindful that his hands were meant for a specific purpose. So even when he wasn't in the temple, when he wasn't doing his duty, it still made a difference because God didn't anoint him so that only when he's in the temple, he's sanctified, consecrated, set apart. No, this ceremony was out in the open for everyone to see. And so that's always interesting. You have to keep in mind this. And I always think about this, uh, not only as a child of God, but also as a teacher in the children's ministry. You know, if, if, for example, I'm in the grocery store and let's say somebody hit me in the ankle with their cart. That hurts. I don't know if you ever had that happen, but that really hurts. And so you might get angry initially. And maybe you saw the person was on their phone and not paying attention and that even angers you more. But can I snap? Can I be like, oh, wait a minute. I, I, I could, but oftentimes, especially when I was early saved, I would think, and I actually thought this, what if pastor was in the store and saw me? 
I, I would be embarrassed, right? Because I'm representing Living Word Christian Center and that means something. And you know, ironically enough, oftentimes I'll see Pastor and Dr. Veronica out. And so again, that's when I was early saved. And I really, again, just did things to make sure I represented who I was as a child of God and my church family in a way that was appropriate. And so, so again, what you do, your actions, what you do with your hands, the work you put your hands to, it makes a difference because now you're representing the most high God, right? Okay, so next in the ceremony, he anointed Aaron's big toe. I find it interesting that it wasn't his foot, but that's just me. I always give extra thought to, God, well, what does that mean? But he anointed his big toe on his right foot. And again, let's think about, think about the big toe, but again, think about the foot. What do we do with our feet? What does it represent when we move our feet? What's the symbolism of the foot? It, it represents the places you go, the, the, the environment that you put yourself in. You know, so when God anointed his big toe, he was saying, you can't go any old place anymore. You can't listen to any old thing, you can't do any old thing, and you can't go any old place. You are now set apart, made holy, and you must only go where God leads you to go. You belong to God. So I want to pause right there because I just spent a few minutes talking about all that you can't do. Don't, don't get sucked into the idea that being a child of God and and being and choosing Jesus as your Lord and Savior means all the stuff you can't do. Sure, absolutely. There are requirements. There, there are places you can't go, things you can't listen to, people you can't hang around, but, but don't, don't get sucked in. The enemy has been using that for years. He don't have any new tricks. He has been trying to convince people that there's more that they're losing than they're gaining. And again, this ceremony, even if we talk about where God is giving you direction, he's given direction for a happy life. Yeah, there'll be some things that you can't do anymore, but as young people, sometimes we only think about the present. We only think about how we're affected now. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to only think about how it affects you in this moment. He doesn't want you to think that, well, if I choose the wrong friends, or if I choose friends that I know they don't care nothing about school, they don't listen to their parents. Matter of fact, they're trying to convince me to do some bad things. If I choose them, well, I'm young. I can make up for it later. It doesn't work that way. And the enemy knows that. He knows that you can do stuff, make choices, listen to things, go to places right now that not only affect you right now, forget about the fact that you're going to get in trouble, you're going to be put on punishment or whatever happens when there are consequences in your household. But he knows that there are things you can do right now as a 10 year old, 11 year old, eight year old that can affect you as an adult that can affect your children. What? Yes. I know you may not even plan on having kids, but that's how the enemy thinks you may be thinking right now, but the enemy isn't. He wants you. He wants to kill, steal and destroy. We know that, right? The Bible says it. And he's thinking in the long term. He wants you to think short term. So when God gives you an opportunity to make better choices, because that's all this is about. I might be telling you that God is telling you what to listen to and, and what, what to say and what to do. But it still is your choice, right? No matter what you hear in a lesson, God does not force us. If he doesn't force us to be saved, then he's not going to force you to consecrate yourself and set yourself aside for him. It's never by force, it's by choice. It's your opportunity to say, you know what? I know some things that I won't be able to do, but I know all the greatness is in God. I know the, the big picture, my whole life, my true happiness, my true calling, that's in God. And while I may have to sacrifice some things, it's okay because I come out a winner. And, and isn't life sacrifices anyway. Okay. So again, let me, let me give you one of those. Let's bring this to our everyday lives. Let's say you're at a restaurant, right? And maybe it's a new one and you're looking through the menu and you're like, Oh man, I want this. I want this. Ooh, that looks good. And you have maybe four things that you want to, to eat that looks good to you. But um, unless I, I can't say that I have never ordered more than one meal when something looks good in some place new. So, but I've never ordered four. <laughs> Because sometimes you want to try different things. And so you make some choices, right? When you make a choice, there's something you're choosing not to do. 
something you're choosing not to have. So while the other four dishes or three dishes may look great, you've decided this is the one I want. This looks best to me. I think I'm really going to like it. And so you decide that you're going to let those go before this one, because this is going to give you the best satisfaction, right? And so that's life. That's your relationship with God. You're always going to have a choice. So again, I pause to talk about this because I don't want you to get caught up in the whole idea, well, she's just telling me all the stuff I can't do. Mm -mm. This is to represent a ceremony that God is teaching you something, that when you choose me, when you set yourself apart, make that choice, then the blessings, the benefits, the favor, that's what we focus on. So I just wanted to add that a little bit because, again, I've, I've been hanging out with you kids a lot, and I, sometimes I know how you think, so I wanted to put that in there. So, so we've, we've learned about the ceremony where God has clearly said, this is what I expect of you. He expected that of them in, uh, when they were set apart to be priests in the temple, and he is saying the same thing. So what we have learned when we look deep into the meaning of the ceremony, we have to understand that God is saying the exact same thing to us today. Mind you, apply it to today, and in all honesty, there are more choices, or I should say more opportunities for us to listen to things that are out of the will of God, or say or do things, or go places that are outside of the will of God. And so it's even more important today that we understand that it's critical that we make the choices that are pleasing to God. Now, is he saying he, let me read these words to you again, consecrated, uh, uh, sanctified, set apart. Did I say perfect? I did not. He's not expecting your perfection. Sometimes we get caught up in these big words and they mean something, they're important, but no point is God expecting you to be perfect. He just wants you to make a choice where your thinking, your heart is turned towards him, your decision making, you let him in to help you make those decision, decisions. And I promise it, it won't, the more you do it, the more natural, it's not hard. You don't even feel like you're losing anything. Maybe in the beginning you feel like, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. But the more you push that stuff away, the more this opens up. Like, you mean if I don't do that, then I, oh, okay. You mean if, if I sow my seed and I pay a certain price, whether it be my time or my money and put it, you know, in a sacrificial way, then I get this? It'll, God will light, enlighten it. But you first have to make the choice. So he's saying that today, I want you to make that choice. I want you to know that you are sanctified, made holy, and set apart. I want you to know that I am able to fully equip you for the job I've already ordained for you, and that when you decide to join me in that sense, again, he's not asking you to be a priest necessarily, maybe, might be a pastor out there, you know, but he's asking you to choose him in whatever role or capacity that he has for you. And when you do that, you first, you have to acknowledge that you are now representing the Most High God and that from that point on, you're fully taken care of. I know in a previous lesson in this, you were taught about the military. And this is a good time to talk about that. Like when you decide, you make a decision, I'm going to be a soldier. I'm going to join the Army, Navy, Marine, whichever one, Air Force. When you do that, when you say that pledge to say, I'm going to defend this country or whatever the pledge is, the military then says, I got you. Not only will I provide you with what you need to be a soldier, whether it be weapons, teach you how to fly an airplane if you're in the Air Force, um, uniforms, they're going to give you everything you need that pertains to your life. You'll, you'll be fed. You'll, you know, you'll have every need that your physical body need met. You'll have opportunity for additional education outside of the military. Not only that, your family is taken care of. You're, you're given life insurance and, and um, access to health care. I mean, every, anything you can think of, the military now provides because you're a, a servant in the military. And so it's no different when you set yourself apart for God. So if you're ready to do that, just repeat after me in this, in this prayer. You are making the choice. So repeat after me. 
Father God, I want to be anointed, consecrated, sanctified, holy, and set apart for your service. I give you my ears, hands, and feet to be used to glorify you. Please equip me for the special job you have especially for me so that I may please you and do the work needed to help your people. In Jesus name, amen. Well, amen. I pray that you said that. I pray that you have a new knowledge of what it means to be in God's service, that there is a sacrifice you make, absolutely, but the blessings and the benefits far outweigh anything that the enemy may convince you that you're giving up. So I pray that I was able to enlighten you and apply this as a modern day or your real life example of what God wants for you. But besides all that, you have to start with being saved. I already mentioned being a child of God, and you do that by first accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I pray that you have you have learned through previous lessons or previous experiences more about who Christ is in this lesson. If there's confusion, because again, my message was on this ceremony and I wanted you to understand it from that point, but know that Jesus is the way. He's the only way to the Father. And to start all the benefits and the blessings that I talked about, it starts with your understanding that Jesus died on the cross for your sins so that you have the opportunity to be to be in God's family and to receive all that he has for you. So while you're repeating after me, let's get you saved. Raise your right hand just as a sign of your submission and an understanding of who Christ is and repeat after me. Father God, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life and how I live. Father, forgive me. I repent of my sins. I believe, died on the cross, redeeming me from all sins. And I thank you that through his sacrifice and that his, through his blood, I am saved. Please live your life in me and through me. From this day forth, I belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen. Praise God. I pray that this was an awesome learning experience for you. I pray that, that God continues to anoint you and bless you and consecrate you and pour into you all that you need to know to be your best, the best version of yourself and to receive all that he has for you. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Love you guys. In Jesus' name, amen. Super